So good morning team. Uh, one of the things I've been having to do for work recently is create a bit of a, a risk map or a heat map uh, around some different factors and so as a lifelong learner I needed to figure out how to do this and so I thought I'd give it a go in Excel and I found this kind of example on the internet and thought that's pretty cool. Um, how can I do that easily inside of Excel? So I'm going to show you one way to do it. There's probably a heap of other ways um, but this one certainly worked for what my requirements were. So. I'm going to uh, just minimize the example that I found and put it to one side. And here you can see on the left that I have three columns, risk type, the activity that's generating some of that risk and the impact that is uh, of that risk. And we want to be able to map that onto a, a heat map of some sort. So I have a number of different risk types here and I've just made up some arbitrary scores over here. So the trick that I've found to do this is if you go to insert, you can choose a scatter chart. Okay, so a simple one like that and uh, it shows up on your uh, spreadsheet and then you need to select the data that you want. So you do that by choosing add data and for your X series, you can choose in this case uh, activity and for Y values, I'm going to get rid of what's in there and put my impact in. And so immediately you can see that I have uh, my points plotted against here. Now I'm going to modify this really quickly to show you uh, how I think we can make it look a little bit cooler. Uh, so I'm going to uh, get rid of a few factors which, um, in my view, uh, maybe distract from the story that we're trying to tell. Uh, so I'm getting rid of the uh, grids at the back. And the key here now is that we want to format the plot area. So this is kind of the trick that I learned in doing a bit of investigation here. We're going to make it a gradient fill. And you can see it starts with this kind of blue sort of one here, and these gradient stops are what's driving it down the bottom. So what you might want to do is think about what are the colors that you might go through. And sometimes traffic lights are a pretty good sort of analogy, right? That we can uh, move from green to yellow, uh, and then on to orange perhaps, and then finally on to red. Now these are all customizable. And by default, it is a linear type of uh, um, progression. I've actually come to like the radial. Okay, the radial is pretty cool. And uh, you do have some preset gradients here that you can work with. Sometimes, though, the direction is going to be pretty important. So I would typically start with my low risk in the bottom left uh, with my lower numbers and getting higher in the top right. Now you can see that we have a very large green and yellow here. Now the cool part is that we can essentially slide and customize. I've still got a blue one hiding in here, so we're going to get rid of that by simply clicking to kill him. Uh, and now we're starting to uh, really customize how we see our risk charts happening. If we think that you know once you're into four, you're going to be getting a bigger risk, you can grow out your other ones down below and make them a little bit brighter. Probably a bit of overkill on the red there, so let's just maybe stretch these out a little bit like this as well. So pretty simple way of plotting against uh, a chart here. Now some tricks that you might also want to consider is by choosing things like your uh, your axes, you can actually format these as well. So I might uh, say I'm scoring out of one to five, but I want to leave some leeway on either side uh, of the um, of the maximum score, so it doesn't sit right on the edge. I might make it uh, five point. Uh, 5.5 and we want the minimum score to be zero so that's going to tidy that up a little bit and generally jumping in major uh, increments of five uh, or one sorry makes the most sense uh, I can do the same here where I'm going to make it five and jumping in one make it zero uh, and in my experience I actually like to just get rid of the uh, the measures along the bottom completely so again we can just select those categories and delete. We can give it a title, uh, risk uh, heat map. There we go, looking good. We may want to give some axis titles down here. So we said along the bottom this was going to be uh, activity, activity, and um, y axis was going to be impact. All right, so we're now starting to map these on. One thing you'll notice that is missing, and I don't have a super smart way of doing this, is actually labeling these ones here. So um, you may choose to find that you, you I mean you can label them individually uh, by putting 
uh, a data label here, add data label, and it comes in as you know three, which is not very helpful. So you might call it R three, all right, to give it a better name. Uh, and then you can go through and label these, and then these will move around as you start to um, as you start to modify your data in your table uh, two, etc. So I just thought this was a pretty cool and easy way to build out a risk heat map, and uh, wanted to share it with you today. Thanks a lot.